using metals to protect yourself from your government. And a lot of our clients and our viewers are trying to do just that. We have a related question, and you've addressed this. Uh, the last time I think we spoke about it explicitly was after uh, Trudeau's actions following the Freedom Trucker Rally in Canada uh, about a year and a half ago. But <clears throat> there's a question from Peggy Lohman who says, are vaults safe from confiscation from the government, such as precious metals IRAs? And there's another one in here talking about are people... Uh, everyone talks about taking your 401k IRA, rolling it over into gold and silver. And uh, what about annuities? Are they in danger? So two separate questions, but both on this idea of protecting yourself uh, from danger by trying to get out of paper assets and into uh, real uh, owning of real assets. Uh, I, I think that that topic is best understood in terms of probabilities. Uh, I believe that the ownership of physical gold and silver at home what I laughingly call midnight gardening, is riskier, uh, particularly if you talk a bit, because you run the risk of somebody coming to visit you that you wouldn't normally have over for lunch. So there's a range of risks. I also think that the risk of government confiscation, physical confiscation of your IRA or physical confiscation of your precious metals in the intermediate term, which is to say the five to 10 year term, is very low. The government has many more efficient ways to steal from you, and you admire them for those forms of theft. Taxation is theft, but to the extent that uh, the government taxes particularly somebody else, their constituencies love it. Inflation is theft, uh, but rising price levels are regarded by many people as evidence of economic prosperity. Uh, quantitative easing, the printing by the government of specious currency units unbacked by anything, is theft. But people like the government to create money so that they can shower them with benefits that they don't deserve. <laughs> uh, excessive government debt is theft from a future generation. Governments thrive by stealing, and they would prefer to steal in ways that the populace approves of. Remember that there are 400 million guns in private circulation in the United States. I don't think that the government would risk the wrath of people by coming to their front door and stealing from them directly, confiscating their IRAs or making them invest their, their IRAs in government security, confiscating their physical gold and silver. They won't do that. They'll increase the debt, they'll increase inflation, they'll increase taxation, they'll increase quantitative easing. And ironically, the voters will reward them for it. <laughs> currency value uh, worldwide, all fiat currencies have been going you know, down in value, in purchasing power, excuse me. Um, uh, you've in the past talked with us about maintaining cash liquidity, for uh, be ready for an opportunity or also maintaining bullion liquidity. Can you give us an update on your stance on that or why people need to be listening to those words in a new way at this time as we enter this season? Virtually unchanged, Dunnigan. Um, a financial planner would look at my estate and see me as the largest shareholder of Sprott uh, and a fairly substantial investor in mining shares too and saying, why on earth would Rick Rule own gold? He's highly leveraged to gold's future. I own gold as an insurance asset. I don't own it because I think the price might go from $2,000 to $2,270. I own it because I'm afraid of a circumstance that would take the nominal gold price in US dollar terms to $8,000 or $10,000. I buy it as insurance. And like any other insurance class, I actually hope I don't get paid on it. Think about it. Life insurance means somebody that died. <laughs> Auto insurance means your car got stolen or wrecked. Uh, I own gold not because I'm greedy, which I am, but rather because I'm fearful. I consider gold to be good if volatile liquidity. I also maintain U.S. dollar liquidity, despite the fact that I think the real rate of inflation is much higher than the stated rate of inflation. And that means that the spending power that I enjoy for the cash I save is declining despite the fact that I might be getting a four or four and a quarter yield. I do it because I believe that the negative yield, the difference between the decline in the purchasing power and the rate of interest that I get on my savings, uh, I regard that as an option premium. 
Uh, I think that having cash will, if we experience a liquidity crisis, circa 2008, uh, give me both the tools and the courage to take advantage of that circumstance rather than being taken advantage of by that circumstance. So I continue to hold both gold and short-term uh, U.S. dollar-denominated savings products for liquidity. You've described yourself at times both as a speculator in the past and as an investor more recently. <laughs> um, people who are holding physical silver or have investments that are tied to the price action of physical silver. And as you've talked about how silver tends to move farther and faster later in the uh, bull market cycles, as you've seen in the last several bull markets with precious metals. People who ask questions like we've gone asking, where do you see silver by the end of 2024? But rather than picking a price target, you've talked to us in the past about put just positioning yourself in unpopular positions and waiting for the market to prove you right and then going ahead and, and stepping out. But maybe partly that question might have buried in it uh, where you see or what signs in the tea leaves you would be looking for to, to start exiting a position when the market has proven that you were wise to position yourself in it. Uh, what I find is when a topic becomes popular, the easy money has been made. You and I talked three years ago about uh, uranium, Donegan, uh, to the collective yawn of most people. When the price of uranium was at 20 bucks and had to go up, nobody wanted to own it. Now that uranium is at 100 bucks and it doesn't have to go up, everybody wants to own it. When I see uh, silver uh, on the cover of Barron's magazine or something like that, when I see all of the scamsters that are, you know, currently selling psilocybin stocks or uh, AI stocks or lithium stocks crowding into the silver space, I'll be looking to take my exit. Uh, yes, by the way, I have some sold some uranium stocks. When uh, a commodity goes from hated to unhated, it doesn't have to go to loved. When it goes from hated to unhated, the easy money has been made. Silver disappointed so many newcomers during the silver squeeze. Uh, and by the way, there's nobody angrier than a jilted lover uh, that it's truly hated. Uh, when I look at the comments that will accompany this interview after it's been published, many people will say, I can't believe this guy's droning on about silver. It hasn't done anything. That's precisely why I like it, because it hasn't done anything. I like it because there's no competition. I, I want your viewers to look at me. Look at my face. I'm a 71-year-old, bald, fat, aged male. And I can win the 100-yard dash if I'm the only guy that shows up to run. I love markets where I have no competition. And silver is a speculative market that's just that. And the silver stocks themselves are even more beat up, which is even better. Uh, they're uh, a higher leveraged. Uh, more speculative, more alpha-oriented play, not for weaklings, not for people who don't have the courage of their convictions over a long weekend. Uh, but the truth is, Dunnigan, and I've, I've cited these statistics on your show before, when the silver stocks move, there isn't enough combined market cap among the legitimate ones to hold the money from the generalist investors. And you get moves like the silver standard move, 75 cents to $45, uh, like the Pan American silver move, 50 cents to $40. Or the granddaddy of all the silver stock moves in the 1970s, Coeur d'Alene Mine, 10 cents to $65. Not a typo. Now, this isn't for the fate of heart. Use money <laughs> that you can stomach volatility on. Be prepared to wait for 18 months or two years. Uh, but that's not too long to wait for a 10 bagger. If you have the financial and psychological fortitude to take it. I was just re-listening to an interview you did with you interviewing Keith Newmeyer ahead of last uh, this last July's uh, rule conference, our symposium on natural resource investing, where he was describing the plight of the the unloved aspect of mining company stocks and how the ratio of uh, the asset itself, the like the for example, silver itself to the mining the silver mining company stocks has has never looked more uh, obvious that the that the mining stocks are undervalued. Can you bring us up to date on your views of that it, as far as a contrarian investor considering stepping dipping their toe into uh, silver mining stocks at this time? 
Well, I disagree with some points in Keith's analysis because he looks at it from the point of view of a silver miner. It's important to note that silver miners pr uh, produce about 18% of the new mine supply. Silver miners uh, exhibit precisely the tendencies that he talked about. If, however, you are a copper miner or a lead miner or a zinc miner and silver is a byproduct for you, the truth is that the silver price doesn't matter much to you. <laughs> Uh, so it, it's important to differentiate uh, what Keith said with regards to silver miners relative to miners in general. What that means, though, is that during periods of shortages, even though the silver price goes up, silver production doesn't go up that much. Uh, because as an example, if the copper price was down and the silver price would go was up, copper production would fall, which means byproduct silver production would fall as opposed to rise, which you would expect in a rising silver market. So it's important, it's important to look at the whole circumstance, not just the circumstance uh, as described.